fans, something a little different today. We are going to be looking at remote sensing with Python in Jupyter, or Jupyter, don't know how to say it. We have looked at using Python and Jupyter before, and we were using that with ArcGIS Pro. But today we're going to do something a bit different and have a look at Google Earth Engine. This video came about because Alok got in touch and he wanted to use part of the Modus dataset for a project that he's doing on aerosols, I think. So if you go to USGS, you can find all the MODIS datasets. Uh, this one's MCD19A2, very catchy name. And it's all about, uh, well, I'm not too sure. Never used it before, but Alok's problem was that he wanted to use this. And this is a daily dataset that's been recorded since 2001, I think. And so obviously there is an awful lot of data to work with. I believe the lock was downloading chunks of data and trying to process them using ArcMap or ArcPro, one or the other. And I thought about it for a while, and this really is where Google Earth Engine comes to the fore. Now I've not used this for a long time, but it did give me a little nudge. And if you want to go to Google Earth Engine, slightly different from Google Earth, and you can sign up. So that's the first thing to do. Now I've signed up already for this. So I'll just show you what the sign up page looks like. Oh, it already knows that I'm logged in. That's very useful. Now, once you have signed in for Google Earth Engine or signed up for it, you will get a email and that will tell you how to log in, etc. Now I'm already signed in. It does take a little while for the email to come through, but it should be with you within the day. And I'll just show you quickly the code editor. This is the kind of stuff that we want to be working towards today. And the code editor looks like this. So this is my owner account. I've got a few scripts in there that I've used previously. And we've got some examples here. So I'm going to go for the hillshade example. If I click on that, then you can see all this code. Let's have a look. It's going to convert degrees to radians. We are going to get rain slope aspects and we are going to get several different views i think which is kind of cool so how google earth engine works is you can put in javascript code you have access to a huge vast amount of data that is stored elsewhere and you can put in these codes and then just hit run and here's our hillshade example you can see all the layers loading up and this, I believe, is global. Fantastic. Now, the nice thing about Google Earth Engine is that all the processing takes place elsewhere. So you don't need to worry about how powerful your computer is. You can write the scripts, you have access to all the data, and off you go. So pretty special. Now, what Alok wanted to do was instead of learning JavaScript or getting to grips with JavaScript, he was more interested in using Python. And so what I decided to use here was Anaconda Navigator. Now, if you're not familiar with Anaconda, it is a really handy way for managing different environments. And what I want to do here is create a virtual environment on my computer that's kind of shielded from everything else and it's just gonna be used in order to use Google Earth Engine Python API. So the first thing I need to do is to create a new environment. So I'm gonna go here and for my Python version, I am gonna go with 3.7. I'm gonna include R just because, well, it might be useful in the future, why not? And for the environment name, I'm gonna call it Google Earth Engine. Or Google EE actually, that's easier. And there we go. So once I hit create, Anaconda is going to go off and create that environment for me. Our Google EE environment has now been created and you can see all the packages that have been installed along with it over on the right hand side. Now to start this environment, you can hit the play button and then you can open the environment using the terminal with Python, with IPython or with a Jupyter notebook. Now, before we dive into the Jupyter Notebook, I do want to set up a new kernel using IPy kernel. 
so that when we start a Jupyter Notebook, we can start it using this environment specifically. So if I just open up the terminal here and type in Python, uh, install, oh, no, ipy kernel, install, name, and I'm going to give it the name GEE. -E. Now you'll see when we open Jupyter Notebook that this means I can select a notebook to open in this environment that I've just created here. I'll just run that and there you can see we've got a new kernel installed. That's great. Let's close that off and then go back to Google EE and open this up with Jupyter Notebook. Now when Jupyter Notebook starts, it should start in your browser. You can see that the uh, local host is running there. We get redirected. And here's all my notebook. Ah, missed the plural. Um, so if I want to start a new notebook now, I can go over to new and you can see I've got all these potentials in here. And here's our new one, the GEE. -E, and that's what we want to start it with. Now we're not actually going to start this yet because there is a couple of other things that we do need to do before we can start this environment successfully. So what else do we need to install? Well, we need the Google Earth API. That would be very useful, the Python API. So what I can do here is just start up the terminal again. Now I'm going to have to do some jumping around here just to show you things, so hold tight. I've got the window open and I'm just going to check that Conda is installed. Because we're using Anaconda, we should be fine here. And typing in Conda, it brings up all the commands that we can use. So we're going to use Conda in order to install the Google Earth Engine Python API. And you can find where that is by nipping across to the Python installation web page. The docs on this are really good. Now it's got a load of stuff in here about check and feed conda install, kind of just did that. Install conda, mini conda. We don't really need all of this, mainly because we're using anaconda and it's working pretty well. So installing the API, this is what we really need. It's a conda forge package, that's good. And we can use the conda install. And here we go, we've got the environment. We've already got our environment up and running. And this is what we want here. So conda install C conda forge earth engine API. So I'm just gonna copy that. And then we are going to go back to here. Now you can see that I've got my Google E um, environment working. I'm just gonna paste that in there. And all of that, whatever. Let's go. Now it's collecting the package metadata and Conda is going to do its magic and install Earth Engine API for us. So I'm going to leave that going. That has now run its course and you can see that everything is complete. It did tell me that I need to uh, update Conda. Yeah, we'll do that soon, promise. Anyway, so now that we have done that, we can go back to the Python installation instructions and what do we need to do oh we need some credentials so we need to do earth engine and authenticate so let's have a look at this if we go back to our command prompt let's just try typing in earth engine see if this works it does indeed excellent so let's earth engine and authenticate Now what this does is it opens up a web page and it will ask you to sign in. Once you sign in, it will provide you with a one-time code. You copy that and paste it back into your command prompt and hit enter and then you'll be authenticated and you can use Google Earth Engine. Awesome. So I'll just do that. I'm going to switch off the video because these are private things. So the private things are complete and I've zoomed right in so that all you can see is successfully saved the authorization token. That is great news. What we can do next is start up our Jupyter Notebook and we can test whether or not Google Earth Engine API is working. Back we are in Anaconda and here's our Google EE environment that now has the Google Earth Engine API already in it. So let's open this up with Jupyter Notebook. 
This is going to boot up again and it's going to open up in our browser, your browser of choice. And I'm going to go for new and I'll go for a GEE. -E. Let's open this up. Very good. Currently it's untitled. I'm going to change that and call it GEE -E demo. Rename that. And the first thing that we can do to test this is just run a quick command saying import EE. -E. When I hit run on that, it has worked. And we can also do a quick print of EE, just so that you get some output. And there's a module EE running from this particular location, which means our Earth engine is installed and working. Happy days. Congratulations, go make yourself a copy. Now we can really start to explore what EE can do, or Earth engine. And this is where the fun starts. First of all, we are going to need to do a little import. So from ipython.display, we would like to import image. And this will allow us to play around with images. The next thing that we need to do is run a quick method called initialize. And that's from the EE side of things. So we're just giving that kickstart to go. All right, and I'll just run that. Let's do a quick run and make sure that we've got no errors. Now we can get onto the cool stuff. And if you have a look at the Google Earth Engine Python documentation, Python API, you will find this little snippet. And what this is doing is we're creating a variable called DEM. And we are going to pull in a DEM, give it some coloration, and we're going to display it. This is pretty fun. So let's enter that and hit run. And there we go. We have got a DM of the world, which is kind of neat. It's just displaying a thumbnail. What would be really nice is if we could have an interactive map. So back in the Google Earth engine documentation, I found this section on the Python installation, a Colab notebook. Now this is where a Jupyter Notebook is hosted um, and you can play around with that without having to install anything. The disadvantage of that is that you can't add your local files that easily. Um, because I've got the Jupyter Notebook and Google Earth Engine set up on my local computer, I can do that, which is kind of nice. Now one thing that they've got here in this section is the interactive map. And we can use something called the Folium package to create a leaflet map. This sounds pretty cool. I would like to do this. So I'm going to copy all this code. Yeah, that's right. Just copy and paste. And I'm going to add in a cell below. Oops. There we are. And I'm going to paste that in. Excellent. Now I don't need to authenticate because I've already done that. So I'll just blank that out. We can leave the initialize in. And what this is going to do is it's going to make a little method in order to uh, create, well, it's just a method for displaying Earth Engine image tiles to a Folium map. And Folium is not something I've used before, so let's give this a run and see how it works. Oh, it does not work. And that is because we do not have a module named Folium. What can we do about this? Well, we can go back to our Conda installation and we can have a look for Folium. So if we search packages and we'll do a search for Folium. No, there's nothing there, which means we should be able to use Conda instead. Folium C Conda Forge. And it looks like this is installing our Folium package for us. Now I may need to restart Jupyter Notebooks in order to get this to run, but we'll try it, see what happens. So Conda's installed that. You can see that that's all complete. Excellent. Now let's get back to our, back to our Jupyter Notebook and let's try this again. I would be mighty surprised if this works. I think we're going to need to restart this uh, 
thing, but let's see what happens. Oh, this is looking good. And what are we doing? We've got that DEM in again. So let's have a look. Visual parameters, mind map. Ah, and there's our DEM on a leaflet map. And look at that. We can zoom in. Let's go and have a look at South Africa. Do, 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 do. Superb. So hopefully you can see the benefit of using Google Earth Engine in Jupyter. It does allow you to do a lot of things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do. And you've got a direct line into satellite imagery. Um, so you can use Sentinel data, Sentinel 2, Sentinel 1. And also you have a direct line into TensorFlow as well. So if you're looking at making artificially intelligent models and the like, you can also do that. Now in the UK, uh, fairly recently, back in November, we had some flooding. And so I went through some of the examples and some of the scripts that people have posted up to Google Earth Engine code repositories and the like, and found one that uses uh, radar data from the Sentinel-1 program. And I've got this code here that I've been working through. What I wanted to do was use this and use a before image and an after image. So you can see these images here. Before we had heavy rains and after we had heavy rains and I wanted to see if we could spot a flood. So I'm just gonna run this. This is just one example of what you can do. And obviously without needing the processing power on your actual computer, this is kind of neat. So I think in terms of a lock's needs, this might work really well for him. <clears throat> you can uh, code up what you want to do and not worry about running out of processing. Now this is an area of Doncaster called Fish Lake that got flooded quite heavily and the blue areas are where we've got floods. Now I did do a bit of ground truthing on this. Um, I know for sure that this area was heavily flooded. There are photographs of floods all down this road. So it doesn't look like it's worked perfectly but I'm no expert with radar data. Um, but I mean, if you zoom out, you can certainly see which areas were impacted more than others by these uh, floods. Wow, looks like it's overshot some what? But an interesting idea anyway, and certainly something that could be refined. Um, might be quite useful to look at Hurricane Edai. Might work on that for another video. And on that note, I think I've kept your attention enough. Um, if there's any part of this that feels over your head and that you're not too sure about, do leave me a comment and let me know what you're struggling with. And I might do a separate video just on that section. If you've stuck all the way through to the end here, well done. You uh, get a lot of gratitude from me for doing that. Uh, we also had a comment of the week, month, channel I suppose I've never done this before but we'll call it comment of the month and that is to Victor because Victor said it's quantum baby and Victor that means that you are possibly a fellow member of the uh, the church of Wittertainment if you're not no worries I like the comment anyway so do get in touch uh, via email let me know where you're at and I will send you a much sought after Bird GIS sticker. That's right. You can represent, stick it on your laptop. You'll be the envy of everyone you meet. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, leave a comment below if you want one of those awesome stickers. Happy mapping.